Chess friends, welcome back to the grind. Another day. Let's see what we can do. Play my new favorite opening, the London system. We are playing against an unusual dev. That makes two of us. From Brasilia. Nice. We did a little bit of studying on last night's stream on how to um, sort of defend a b2 square when an early queen comes out and attacks the pawn. So uh, c3 is the play there we learned, or possibly c4. Yeah, I played one unrated uh, rapid game with the London system, and I was just getting demolished uh, with the early queen attacks on b2. Um, this is defended. C2 is defended. Hmm. I do like the light square bishop. So I'm just going to opt to and his knight. Um, he could potentially defend with the queen. He didn't defend with the queen. So I'm usually in the camp of trading off the bishop to stack the pawns. Uh, that's where I'm at in life, at least. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, I do have e5. That is a move. Kind of would like to develop. I could also castle. Hmm. I think I'll develop so I can kind of free up some space on the queen side of the board here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do this. No reason to think too hard about that. He does have a weakness on c6 now. So at some point, I need to think about exploiting that. Okay, he really wants to trade off the bishops here. I could either fall back to g3 and then open up Open up the H file for myself. Kind of like that idea. I kind of would like to try that. It's, it would be something different. Um, Because if he retakes with the queen here, it's going to invite him to kind of do some dark square B attacks, which isn't the end of the world, but um, I'm just going to try one game where I fall back with the bishop and Try to open up the h file. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. I nearly lost along there. Could try to pressure his bishop on f5. Um, castling would be nice. Also, c4 is a really nice move at this point. How else can he really defend c4? His bishop can't get over there. Well, his bishop could get over there. Hmm. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try c4. So if he takes with the pawn, I have the recapture with the knight on c4 and then also attacking his dark square bishop. Um, hmm. He does win a pawn here. He's got two attackers on g3. So 
I think we need to not be silly and just take that. Right. And. Hmm. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that uh, he would triple stack his pawns, but it looks like he's not going to be doing that. Hmm. We are defending. Maybe we just go b3 and add another defender to c4. If I move my knight, I I need to castle before before I move my knight. That's what I'm trying to say. Hmm. Yeah, I can't really move my knight because then he wins g2. I think I'm going to castle so I can at least move my knight. And try to protect c4 and attack e4 at the same time. I know he wins a pawn here, but I do have queen e2. Also, I need to be sort of always mindful. Of this move here. Yeah, so I do like knight d2. Let me just think if there's anything else. Yeah, so he actually just triple stacked his pawns, um, which I didn't think he would do, but it's going to be a big weakness in his position. <laughs> Turn the lights off. The weather's starting to get a little bit gloomy around here. Um, I imagine he's going to go d5. Yeah, the weather's starting to get gloomy. So our beautiful summer days are coming to an end. The dark depression is almost among us. And like I said, I'll be really surprised if he doesn't go d5. It's really the only way he can defend this pawn. Uh, I don't see another way that he can defend it. None of his pawns can de defend d d5. What did I say? d5? I meant to say c4. Whoops. Um, yeah, he can't push. That just wins the pawn. Interesting. Ah, he's bending this way. Um, yeah, sure. So a bit forced to go to e1 here, right? Hmm. No reason to think too hard about that move. I'm just going to go on a limb and say that his bishop is going to have a really hard time in my territory like this. <clears throat> okay. This is fine. I think this is fine. I'll probably go b3 next. Historically, I don't do the best when I have an open h-file after I've castled. So we'll see if we can turn this around. He's only up one pawn, but he's got a triple stack of pawns. So even though he is up uh, a piece, I believe I'm still just better off. Let's see. So he's got two attackers. Uh, I got two defenders. I'm happy to push a pawn here. I'm, I'm happy to protect or recapture with the knight. And um, if he wants to retake, I can always just take back with the queen, so no big deal. 
Um, cool. So this should equalize the pawn situation. He takes. I'll probably go knight of three next. Just attack his bishop. Someone in the comments mentioned that one of the main ideas behind the London system is getting a knight out to, uh, to e5, which I'm failing to do. And I guess I understand that, but I need to just get better about that. What's the idea here? Uh, this should win the bishop, knight f3. His queen will be forced to move. Uh, no, I guess his bishop can take on c4. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Hmm. I don't know what he's planning. Queen g5. Nice little discovered attack there. Uh, really simple one, but nice either way. I mean, what could he really do? Can he go queen f5? No, I think he just loses his queen that way. Okay, so we do get the bishop here. Hmm. I don't know how he's going to support the queen on the h file here. He's got basically three weak pawns. A5, C6, C7. Maybe I just go king F1 at some point to give my king a little bit of insurance in case something sneaky happens. Yeah, so I won a full piece from that discovered attack there, so that was nice. I think he should have went f5 with his queen. Maybe I'm wrong, but queen f5 to defend uh, the bishop seemed like the move there. I do have knight e5, knight c6 next. Yeah, so knight e5, knight c6, knight a5. Um, kind of a nice string of moves. Also, I kind of wouldn't mind just trading a rook off at this point since I'm up a piece. Uh, no reason to complicate the game too much. Yeah, I got really frustrated after yesterday's game, I'm going to be totally honest. Um, I just felt like I was making really amateur moves. And uh, I feel like at this point, for how long I've been playing, I should be getting better about um, simple things like just looking at the entire board and seeing everything that's under attack and everything that's not defended at this point. Uh, a lot of people suggest openings and everything like that that I should be playing, but the more I think about it, I feel like I just lose the most amount of games to tunnel vision and not scanning the board, uh, if that makes sense.
doing something sneaky. How do I pressure his queen? <clears throat> Rook B1. I'll offer the trade here. I believe this force is a rook trade. Um, I don't think he has anything else. Yeah, C2, queen takes. D2, E2, queen takes. Open file, I'll just take his rook, and we can trade off, and then I'll almost just initiate another rook trade and take with the queen. Um, And then, yeah, if I do get the queen onto b1 and we've traded off rooks, there's just a potential for a back rank mate here, since his, queen doesn't ha uh, his king doesn't have an escape square. The rook move might have been a little bit too aggressive to b2. Um, not sure what his plan was there. He need he needed some piece to support his queen down the open h file, but um, the game's not over. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'll recapture with the rook. I I want to keep my queen centralized. So, knight e5 is probably going to be the next move. Start going after his pawns a bit. Could always go queen e4. Try to hunt down the pawns, but the knight doesn't seem like he's in the best spot on f3. Nope, nope, don't, nope. Pre moves. Ugh. Pre moves are a gift and a curse. Look at the board from his position and see what his best bet could be. I feel like honestly he has to go f6 to prevent e5. And what else can he really do? He could put the rook on the same file as the queen. think yeah i don't know it's definitely a move i just don't know if it's the move um let's see i don't think he can actually defend knight c6 so he'll have to yeah, that pawn is lost. Even if he pushes it, I can just recapture it. I also do have the option of just pressuring his rook here as well. I just don't know about the unsupported pawn push. He might just be making sort of desperation moves at this point. He may have had a chance if I moved my king over to f1, uh, and then he, he would have queen h1. He could potentially win a rook that way, uh, if my queen wasn't defending it. Um, 
but I think leaving the king on g1 was the play. I, I was a little tempted to go f1. Prevent some open file king harassment. But I think he lost that chance when he castled. So... I also do have g4 uh, to harass the queen a little bit. It is an undefended square, but I'm just going to probably try to pick off some free pieces here. So. Thinking, 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 thinking. Yeah, we did some good uh, endgame checkmate practice on the stream yesterday. That was actually pretty helpful. Learned some new ideas. Um, I sort of came to the realization that my sort of basic checkmates, you know, queen, a rook, two rooks, queen and a rook, is a little bit rusty and it's not as good as I thought it was. So I'm uh kind of made an effort to practice and learn those a bit last night, uh, sort of with the help of the fellows. This is the put your opponent to sleep gambit. <laughs> Come on, unusual dev. I believe in you, man. You can do it. You can do it. Thinking, 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 thinking. Wouldn't it be sad if we just stuck around here for five minutes and then he resigned? And then all that banter was for nothing? Hey, thanks. <laughs> uh, um, oh, my word. So this is a, a lesson in psychological warfare. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Okay. What have we done? What have we done? How to lose a game in one easy step. I'm really tempted not to post this video. It's gonna make me look like a big doofus. That's <laughs> no, okay. That was on purpose. I'm uh I, I, I wanna practice um some end games. I want to I want to make this game a, a challenge. I'm I'm up for a challenge here, guys. <laughs> I want a challenge. Well, you take my pawn, I take yours. Yeah. So, 
What a fail of epic proportions, man. I want an escape square for my king. I don't. Yeah, that's what I was uh, wanting to avoid. Um, that's fine. This is fine. It's okay. You know, honestly, this is okay. I like the challenge. Winning, winning with the being up on ten points of material. It it, it would have been. It would have been. It would have been too easy. So. I like this. This is more of a challenge, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tactical blunder. Yeah, let's stick with that. Let's stick with that. <laughs> so he's going to pressure this pawn. Cool, I'm going to run it up the board. I'll probably take his queen out and defend it. Yep, figured so much. I imagine he's going to get his queen into the mix. Um, I'll take my queen out and try to bang out his pawns. That's okay, I like this. This is endgame practice. I like it. Ah, uh, good move by him. Hmm. Well, if his king goes over that, I can just take his pawns, right? Ah, no, whoops. That was a fail. Uh, no, that's not a fail because I can take his pawn as well. Right, so that's a fair trade. And I have to check. He'll probably go attack. I'll attack g5. Yeah, this okay. This is way more exciting, actually. Hmm. Um, yeah, sure, I'll trade these off. I have a further pass pawn anyway, so... He's got no pawns, so it's going to be hard for him to win. Is he going to go here? Hmm. See, so if he goes F one, I go G one. Hmm. Let's think about this. Maybe I just deliver check. Horses quing. His quink. Horses quang around. Horses king around. <laughs> Hmm. And I really just want to get the trade. Can't I just protect with the rook here? Let me think about this. I want it to come down to a queen endgame just so I can practice. Um, 
so I can practice the clean end game. I'd be thrilled if he uh, takes with the rook there. Okay. Okay. Looks like he'll be going for a sick draw. Bruh. Need to cover my king. It's gonna be, man. <laughs> Let's be honest. This is way more entertaining. <laughs> I still can't believe I blundered that piece. <laughs> so embarrassing, bro. Oh man. Yeah, I just can't believe I blundered that queen. It's okay. It's for entertainment purposes, so um he's gonna try to uh check me on the H file. So I'm gonna go G. And then I'll probably start going F. Um, if he wants to check me in the G file, that's okay. Um, I'm fine to run away. And yeah, let's see. I don't want to get onto the H file because then I can't go up. Yeah, okay. I mean, he is playing annoyingly. Maybe I have to like get. No, how do I? Yeah, I have to pass one of these pawns, so, and I don't necessarily want to um block this pawn as well. Hmm. Maybe I have to get on h seven so I can teeter totter sort of behind the rook here. Yeah, if he attacks the pass pawn, I'll go g8. Okay. Okay. This is good. I can still defend. And I can push this pawn up. And I can go king f8 get the pawn promoted that way yeah his rook just can't keep pressure on on both sides enough so i'm not sure what his plan with the king move there is the king's obviously protecting all the pieces here so yeah and he can't give me any checks here either so fortunately the king is pretty safe behind this little castle I am going to be forever known as the guy that blundered his queen for no reason. Feels bad. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> he may be forced to resign here. His king is cut off. Oh, thanks, friend. Um... Wonder which one is more valuable here. Oh uh, well, we've been working towards that pawn, so maybe I should blunder another queen and promote another pawn. <laughs> How funny would that be? <laughs> I actually do have a really sick tactic, so when I promote the queen, um yeah, okay. Looks like he'll just be playing for stalemate here, so. Yeah, cool. Um, there's some interesting ways to win this, but why don't we 
Now, do I want to get more material? I don't know. I think that risks stalemate. I kind of want to give him the rook to tell you the truth. Just so I can practice the queen endgame. Um, yeah, whatever. He's really committed to playing this one out, so respect that way, I guess. Let's just end it. Let's let's just end the shenanigans. Let's not drag this out for forever. <laughs> I want to get another queen going. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, GG, man. Okay. <laughs> what a game, bro. So was it a queen blunder or was it a tactical way to be up a queen? You decide. <laughs> Let's do a quick game review. Oh man, what a turbulent game. Yoink. <laughs> Let me look at this. Oh no, that's not the move that I thought it was. Um, Yeah, let's just look at some of the positions. Okay, so so out of curiosity, so I played 85, he played with 80. So, I mean, to be fair, he played pretty well. 81% accuracy. He just made two blunders. And uh, Engine thought we played like 1400s. Um, so, yeah, GG to Unusual Dev from Brazil. Either way. So this is a good move, pinning the knight. Ah, so getting the knight onto e5. Ah, right. Right, so I had the luxury of e5 because his knight was pinned. Yeah, I need to remember that. Um, I need to remember that e5 is free with this pin. Yeah, and that would essentially be... What? A uh, free pawn if I were to retake on c6. Man, the engine really wants C4, like, so bad. That's what I've noticed every time about London System, is that the engine is just bloodthirsty for C4. So, I need to remember that. Hmm. But why, though? Just to stack his pawns or something? Hmm. Falling back was an interesting idea that I've never tried here. Normally, I'm just a trade, even pieces kind of guy, but I just really didn't want his queen coming over here. That was that was my main thought process. I wanted him to advance onto me um, to prevent his queen from coming out. That was my idea there. Really? Pushing to c5? That's such an unnatural move. Why would the engine recommend that? Isn't... Ah, interesting, interesting. But then, doesn't he just stick with the knight? Hmm. I like this position less, even though the engine says it's a bit better for me. I like this move, kind of forcing his bishop to make some hard decisions. Personally, I feel like he should have just ran it back. Uh, or just defended the pawn. Um, I don't think he needed to enter my territory to defend this pawn. 
But then again, who am I to give out advice on the guy that hung his queen this game, right? Ah, so there was one good move here and I found it. I'm surprised the engine liked this move, I thought. That was just really bad for his position since he's not really gaining anything. Hmm. I just don't know what happened to my brain there. My 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 brain just turned off. <laughs> okay, so psychology report. I feel like I just got too comfortable here. And it was such a snap decision that I didn't sit here and think. Um too fast. And I thought about it for five seconds. Okay, this moment will go down in channel history. To be fair though, I did enjoy playing out the end game. So I, I'm just gonna be totally frank. Okay, so protect the pawn was the idea here. Okay, good to know, good to know. I'm really glad that I went F1 because I did not want to get chased up the H file. Yeah, so just trading off pieces here. I really need to get better about just throwing the rook behind. Um, throwing the rook behind a pawn and just launching it up the board. I have a bad habit of doing that from the opponent's side of the board, but I need to just get into the habit of doing it, doing it from my side uh, of the board. I feel like that's a, a bad habit. Yeah, like his pawn was not a big threat here, but it just, it was free. So it, it just felt like a side quest that the rook needed to go out on. I'll move the king to the center part of the board. D3. Hmm. I figured defending the pawns was the better idea here, but... And this is so bad, huh? You ignored an opportunity to... Oh, right. Right, 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 right. Skewer. Yeah, I could have won the rook and finished this game out a lot sooner. Ah, right, right, right. Yeah, his king and his rook were lined up. So there was the skewer, and then uh, e4 was protected by the king. Yeah, okay, tactics. Need to look out for those. Ah, uh, see, so like in this position, I should have just defended the pawn from behind. Okay, okay. Yeah, I need more practice with this kind of stuff. Um, I need to just drill. Right, 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 right. So you guys have mentioned this to me before, so um, I need to get a lot better about that. Hmm. And even if his king comes and tries to attack, like, say, the A-file, I can always just move it back or move it forward when the king comes to attack that. And then he doesn't really have a real way to stop that with a rook, right? I mean, I suppose he could go, like, E8 if I was on A1. And then even if the queen promotes, we just uh, win a rook, essentially. And then we would just hopefully win with the pawn. So yeah, this game probably went on longer than it needed to, just because I wasn't um, supporting this pawn from behind. So... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I could have moved the rook out. Bit closer there, sure. Ah, uh, yeah. Rook is defended by the queen. Yeah. Or a king, excuse me. Bad move here, huh? I didn't want to promote the queen there. Um, I didn't want some funny stalemate business with this diagonal here. That's kind of why I blocked it in with the king. Cool. Yeah, fun game. Um, really stupid move by me. But, um, I don't know. That's the fun part about low elo chess, is that you make mistakes and you learn from them and then you move on. <laughs> so, Alright, thanks guys for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.